Welcome to Fishing Britain. This week, Dave from the Daiwa Garden League takes on the target. We've got the old favourites, hooked on YouTube and Fishing Britain News. But first, we're on the wonderful Pembrokeshire coastline on the hunt for wrasse and bass. There are many expert fishing guides all over the country and it's a great way of learning a new style of fishing and improving your techniques. However, Matt Powell of Fishing and Foraging Wales has taken it one step further. Welsh Bass Guide really is a package of everything I love. Really good food, really good fishing on this day. I, I incorporate you know, wild ingredients from the area I live and work in. I was actually looking you know, at what um, the chaps in Scandinavia are doing, Rene Red Zeppi. Magnus Nilsson um, in the Nordic region. Just wanted to bring that the, the fishing aspect into it, um, that excitement and that being out there and, and, and giving people that sense of place. Matt clearly has a love for fishing and a love for cooking, and it's not just fish and chips. Foraging is basically another word for scavenging. Um, but, you know, I use optimum ingredients. Uh, April, now the end of April, we just had morels. Well, everything I picked myself. Um, you know, and I do use local suppliers. The only thing I buy in really is butter, rapeseed oil, and you know the occasional lobster off the local boats. I left Wales at 17, worked for Raymond Blanc uh, at the beginning of my career, and went to Europe as well to work at Michelin star restaurants there, um, and just took it from there really. You know, my first love was cooking, but I've always been a keen fisherman uh, since I was young, since I was a teenager, and I just wanted to bring you know the, those those three elements together really. Fishing, foraging and fine dining. And you get to stay with Matt in one of these very comfortable bell tents. No, not together though, as he's got his own right next door. You know, I've got no electricity. I'm, I'm, I'm off the grid, which is freedom in itself as well, in a way, because you can just focus on what I'm doing, you know? Just get away from it all. But yeah, very comfortable tents. But why pitch them here in Pembrokeshire? I couldn't think of a more beautiful place to be really. It's been classed as one of the most beautiful coastlines in the world and as you'll see, you know, just a small part of it today, it's, it is exceptional, you know, and uh, on this day, you know, it's still as wild as any coast. I can be out on that coast path for hours and walk miles and, and, and not see anybody. And what do we have planned for today, sir? Well, we'll head off now while the sun is up full and try and hit some wrasse on soft plastics um, and then as the sun's going down we hopefully hit a bass. Bass and wrasse all sound good to us so let's hit the beach man! The Ballon wrasse is found all up and down the UK and mainly on the west coast and as far north as Norway and as far south as the Canary Isles, they get around a bit. They love rocky areas with seaweed to hide in and this rough stuff doesn't seem to put them off. All Ballonrass are females for the first 4 to 14 years of their life, and when they're needed, they turn into males. That sounds easy. Ballonrass have become more popular as a catch and release target for sport anglers, especially using LRF techniques and soft plastic laws like we're going to be using today. 1 0 hook, stops, and a weight. And the little D fin, die worth D fin. 4 inch. So you got a little stop and it goes through that little loop there. Pull the stop onto the line. There we are. Some people don't use it, but I like to keep everything neat and tidy. Then your weight goes on to the line. Then you want to hook your little shad there onto your 1 0 hook. So what you want to do is come through the tip of the bait, just so you're nicking it through. Come through that gap at the bottom. Bring it all the way down till you come to the bend in the hook. Twist the hook. 
so it comes through. Just sit neatly there. And you line the bend of the hook there up to where you want it to come through. So you're looking at under there. And then that goes back through there. So it comes through there neatly. He's got a lovely little slit there as well, so everything sits in tight. So there we are. That's that. And then that just gets tied on onto your onto your the hook of your bait. Wrap that round six times. Make a nice little loop in the line. And then go back through with that tag end through there six times. Just pull it a little bit. Then wet the line and pull that down nice and tight. Just nick that off. That's your, your Texas rig for, for weedless fishing. Fishing that now when it's hitting rocks, just twitch it up and it'll just drag through really. And yeah. that's what you're looking for. And to go down into the nooks and crannies then, you know, of the Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. Of the ground that's behind us. So, is fishing with soft lures the preferred method for wrasses? Yeah, nobody really fishes them for the, with this method around here. I've never seen anybody fishing with soft plastics for wrasses around here. They are a very popular food fish in the Orkneys and in Galway, but Matt doesn't rate them. I've never eaten one, but I, I've heard they're very, um, they're not good for eating. I think the Romans used to eat them though. But then again, they'd eat anything. Must be a Michelin star thing. In Norway, they use wrasses to clean lice off of farm salmon, and it's starting to catch on in the Scottish farms too. I've got to say something. If I ever complain about how rough a reservoir is or a river anymore, forget it. I will say one thing. It, it's, it really makes you feel alive. Um, now you wouldn't have seen this, but I was the other side over there and the waves are coming in there, but I actually got soaked from the land because it went in, came back and soaked me. <laughs> so, I, I can see why Matthew says you need a guide because coming down here is treacherous. And the one thing is, they know the right way to come down. They also know the tides. And that's when a lot of anglers get caught out. So don't go out on your own for the first time. Go with an expert, someone who knows what he's doing. And do you know what? I'd like to see what a wrasse looks like. Just happen. <laughs> it would be nice. But the great thing with this braid and the weedless way he's actually set it up, I can feel that weight just tapping all the way down. And another trick that Matthew told me is to check it in there, leave it slack, a little bit of slack, and just let the waves, the current, just fish the lure for you. So rather than you working it in, just let the current do it all. But I get excited every time it gets sort of, oh, it stopped and I'm thinking it's a fish. No, it's a rock. So you just give it a little tweak and then it drops down and then just leave it and then tweak it again. There it is, still weedless. Still blinking fish as well. <laughs> Yeah, in, 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 in. Here we are. How well? Oh, look at this. Oh, oh well. <laughs> it looks as if the tide's coming in. The wrasse ain't biting. I'm stuck on the bottom. It's time now to hand over to our own well-eating limpet. <laughs> yes, David with the news. David, it's over to you before I drown. This is Fishing Britain News. Canoeing could be illegal in the UK, 
After a long-running battle and formal complaint from Fish Legal, DEFRA has now published its legal opinion confirming that there is no general public right of navigation on non-tidal waters or other inland waters in England and Wales. The opinion goes against many canoeists' belief in a universal right to canoe wherever and whenever they like. The trout made famous in the film The River Runs Through It are heading for extinction. A new report by the US Geological Survey says that the West Slope cutthroat trout of the Rocky Mountain streams of Montana have not fared well over the last 30 years compared to introduced rainbow trout and there are fears they could disappear in the next 30 years. An Olympic gold medalist downhill skier has made a promotional film about fishing. Lindsay Vaughan has retired from ski racing and says on a GoPro film that she's now taken up fly fishing. Fishing is a big hit in China. The film we made with YouTubers Carl and Alex has reached over 800,000 views in just over a week on our channel on the Chinese video site Yuku. And finally, here's Jazzy the wire-haired terrier meeting her first fish. The film speaks for itself. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Thank you, David. While we dry off and relocate to hunt for some bass, it's time for Dave from the Daiwa Gordon League to take on the target. It's another Fishing Britain target challenge, and this week we have this guy. I'm Dave Mipperite, and I'm here to take the challenge. Yes, he is. And as a quick recap, he has to throw a beanbag into the center, cut one in, throw a plug, and also get some fluff in off of a fly rod. He's already killed the camera with his first and second shot and he's trying to throw those beanbags into the center. Now, oh, I'm gonna be tough on that one. That was not quite in, but that one, smack in the center. All he's gotta do now is use the long wobbly pole and get it in the middle. This man is a professional pole user, so this should be the easiest thing in the world. He does this 100 times a day, and he's done the same mistake as everyone else. He got one thingy, I think he means a roller, but that's okay. We're on a budget here at Fishing Britain and only one roller, you should be able to do that. You're a pro! Come on, let's get that last one in. Uh, right, so this one is going out. Like I said before, it's actually quite difficult to judge that distance, but he's done this a million times before and the second time is no problem whatsoever. He's got to ship that pole back nice and quickly now. And now he's got a grab of that spinning rod from his left side. He's got to try and get this. Now this is similar to throwing a plug or even maybe a waggler when you're waggler fishing. So he should be pretty good at this one, I would have thought. And he's had one go and he's gone over the top of the target. Comes a second shot. Oh, he's done the same. He's up on the left-hand side of it. Come on, Dave, you can get this in. Concentrate, pretend there's a big shoulder bream there. Boom, and we're in. Excellent, that's the plug done. Remember, you've got to reel it all the way back in. And now he's got to pick up that fly rod. Now he's just being attacked by our pole, trying to get its revenge. So comes the fly rod. Can he chuck the fluff? And now he does do a little bit of fly fishing, as he said to me before. He's already got it set at the right distance, but you can hear he's pulling off plenty of line off of the reel. Now, is that a mistake or is that going to help him? He's got a little bit of a wind oh. on the side there. He's got, actually, the wind's coming into his face a little bit. And he's got to try and get that rod low down as he lets that line go. He's pulling even more line off. And that's just reaching further and further. Okay, he's got... Oh, no, that wasn't quite in. He went over the back. Too much line. Too much line, Dave. Bring it back. And he's taking his time. He's got a good action there. He's coming... Oh, I think he's going forward a bit too quick. It's almost in. Those last few casts. Come on, you can be able to do this now. You got yes. your it is in. Good man. How did that go, Dave? Very average, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got screwed up with the pole, which really ought to have been the uh, the easiest thing. Yes, it should have been, Dave, but oh, we'll forgive you. Let's have a look at the scoreboard and see where our his teammate and captain, Mark Treasure, is on the bottom, and he's off the bottom. And Dave comes in at 2.31, quite respectable. He's taken a third place, leaving Richard Chapman a very precarious last place. Is he the next to go? Well done, Dave. A respectable time there. Now you lot sat at home. Do you think you could do any better? Well, it's your opportunity. This month, 
Welsh National Game Fair at Pembrey Country Park, 14th and 15th of this month. The target will be there. Do you think you can beat it? Well, there's prizes on offer. And the best will be shown soon here on Fishing Britain. But first, we've come around the coastline. It's time to hunt for some bass. Now, we like walking, but why have we walked two miles to get from those rocks over there to these rocks over here? Current, yeah. uh, water depth really, shallower water, and just, you know, general ground, like, you know, the shallow ground, mixture of rocks, weed, where bigger fish will hide out. Nope. See this white water now? Yeah. I call that the chaos. Right. Where everything's been smashed about. Got you. And... So that's what all the sand deal will be smashed about, yeah? Know? Yeah, okay. That's it. And, you know, it's also the adrenaline thing. When you get a fish in this... Right. You know it's going to be a decent size. So Normally. would you find a smaller bass in here as well? Like you do, yeah. you do, but... But the I'm big boys come out. Yeah, the big girls. They're normally females if they go in. Okay, right, same with pike then. Same, yeah. Alright. Just feeling, you know, the, 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 the terrain and the ground underneath the lure really, and you're just yeah. feeling it coming through the weed. And you expect it to come off there now and drop down. Because the bass will come in here, yeah. underneath and hide. You know, because especially the bigger ones, they're lazy. Right. You know, they don't want to exert too much energy. So what do they hide and then ambush the sand deals as they come? That's right. right yeah. So you can catch them under your feet? Or oh God, I've taken, I've taken eight. Nine pounders right under my feet, here. And you know, when that happens, it's uh, something else. Well, I think maybe we should have stayed on those rocks over there. Matt is a great guide and knows his coastline like the back of his hand. And his food looks stunning, but we haven't caught any tea tonight, so that's us going hungry. If you would like to know more about spending some time fishing, foraging and fine dining, then contact Matt at fishingandforagingwales.co.uk. Now, I wonder if the luckiest angler in the world has caught anything. Well, I haven't caught a bass yet. So let's see what you guys have been catching this week. Here's Hooked on YouTube. Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. It is a bit light on covering shots, but Dry Fly 3 New Zealand explains how they do it down under. Staying on game fish, this film Salmon Connection is part of the National Science Foundation's desire to show the connection of Pacific salmon to healthy seas, healthy rivers and even healthy communities. It brings together a salmon scientist, an artist and an aquarium designer. Ian Chapman, who makes the films for Shakespeare, gets in touch about his latest a basic introduction to method feeder fishing on lakes. Let's go abroad. Silver carp for not super zusa flauschigakuken translates along the lines of silver carp and super cute fluffy chicks. Yes, he meets a swan. Hard not to on some waters. Staying continental Dutch angler Rick Allrounder is stalking carp over several sessions in this film. Crossing the Atlantic for the last three, this 30 pound short channel catfish took the boatless angler 15 minutes to land. Now our old pal Tex Grebner is river bow fishing. He is after America America's big pest species Asian carp in the Illinois River backwaters. And finally, Roberto Ruiz goes to Panama with a headhunter spear gun where he catches, no, shoots a new world record Pacific Red Snapper. Headhunter spearfishing is one of the most ancient fishing channels on YouTube, first broadcasting in 2006. God bless them. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed the programme. If you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Share it with all your friends. If you want to keep up to date with all the other programmes on the channel, visit our website, fieldsportchannel.tv, and fill out that constant contact form. Don't forget, get involved with our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. I'll see you next week on Fishing Britain.